Due to schedule re reliability problems by the track owners, Canadian National, VRL's Canadian line delays from 12 hours to 2 days. That is according to Wikipedia. Also, the Canadian takes 3 to 4 days from Toronto to Vancouver, including the stops and makes, according to CanadaTrains.com, CPTDV Wiki, and a passenger who reviewed the Canadian on Insider. The Canadian can be divided into multiple services, as shown on the slides and on this map I borrowed from Wikipedia and did a little bit of editing. For the full corridor, there will be a mainline service servicing all stations including request stops along the route. Express will stop at the capital and major cities of each province, and Direct will go from Vancouver to Toronto with a possible stop at Winnipeg for supplies. I was also thinking of a second Direct service making stops at Edmonton, Calgary for the CN and CP corridors, and an overall, and an overall stop at Winnipeg. The CP alignment doesn't seem to show any stop at Winnipeg, but CP does having some major connections with the rest of Canada to Winnipeg, which gives me the assumption that Winnipeg could be a good stop for both the railway corridors. The Canadian will be further divided into mainline express services traveling from one province to another, for example Vancouver to Edmonton or Toronto to Winnipeg. On another slide, here are a list of divided services. The northern alignment is in blue, the southern alignment is in red. The eastern alignment um, the eastern alignments span from Winnipeg to Toronto and Montreal, and the unified alignments are from Vancouver to Kamloops and from Winnipeg to Sudbury. The Canadian can also be divided into four services on alignments shown in this slide, as well as on the map. This brings services on the Canadian to reconnect with the southern communities of Canada and with Ottawa and Montreal. I was also thinking of reducing travel times by one to two days with direct services along the full corridor being replaced with high speed rail or at least um, semi high speed rail with fast locomotives traveling between 150 to 210 kilometers per hour with no or a couple of stops. In general, two tracks should be left for express and mainline services. Two more tracks should be given to direct services. There should also be two signings where freight trains from CN and CP can stop, and freight trains should run in a dedicated freight corridor near and parallel to the Canadian route. Stations will be designed with eight tracks, two for stopping, two for freight movement, two extra sidings, and two bypass tracks used for direct and express. In areas where there's only one track, the area should have double tracks for di bidirectional movement. If less space or width is available, have two elevated tracks for direct services. These well, elevations will also separate high-speed rail from the rest of the rail corridor. In the context of track sharing, passenger trains will be given two tracks, freight trains will be given two tracks, including two sidings, and the northern alignment will be given priority to passenger trains to serve the many communities without air or road connections with the rest of Canada. Thank you for watching this video. And here are my solutions. I'll wrap up here. All sources used in the description. Sorry, I couldn't find that many sources about the Canadian line.